We are talking about trigonometry equations and identities, lesson number three, solving equations involving multiple angles. In this lesson, we'll be solving trig equations involving multiple angles, such as sine 3x is equal to root 3 over 2, or cos 2x is equal to root 3 over 2, or secant half x is equal to 2. Now, the difference here than our other ones is that we notice here this coefficient is not 1 anymore. It's not just sine x, but it's sine of 3x and cos of 2x, and this half is a coefficient. Let's take a look at graphically exploring these solutions. So consider cos x is equal to negative root 3 over 2, and we'll look at, our, look at it at the, on the left, and cos 2x is equal to negative root 3 over 2 on the right. So let's just move this up so that we can see it. Okay, so let's just graph this. We'll have, we'll say that that's one here. We have one up at the top here and negative one at the bottom here. And it's going to come up at the top. 90 degrees is going to be zero. 270 is going to be zero. And the 180 is going to be right at the bottom here. So let's see if I can make it the smooth down. That's almost there. This look, should look a little bit more smooth. But let's take a look at root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 is going to look like this. It's just about right there. And here it is right there. So we can see then that we have two spots right here, one right here, and one right here. If we were to make a guess, that looks like 150 degrees and 210 degrees. Okay, what about this solution? So on the right, you have still your one at the top and your negative one at the bottom. Well, what's happening here is that 90 is now in the middle. And this, so it comes through comes down to the bottom and comes back up to the top and then does it again. Looks like it comes down through and then comes back up to the top and something like that. And when we draw our other intersecting line here at root 3 over 2, it looks like we have four answers here. So we have one here, one here, another one here, and another one here. Now this is a crude drawing, but we can say if we take a look at this, it's 75 degrees, and then it's at 105 degrees. And over here, looks like it's 255 degrees and 285 degrees. Hmm. Well, how do we get these numbers? So we see we originally had two if it was just cos x, but now we have four. So how do we make sense of this? Well, the number of solutions here in this one, cos x has, has two solutions in this one to 360 degrees, but this one has, has four solutions. What are the values of x? Well, it looks like these are half. Like 75 here is half of 150. And then 105 is half of 210. So it looks like each one in the cos 2x equaling negative root 3 over 2 is half of the original ones. The original cos x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Well, in that, with that in mind then, we could say we can complete the following. So if we were to have this, the general solution to cos x is equal to negative root 3 over 2 has two parts. It's going to be 150 degrees plus 360 degrees n, with n, n being any integer, and then we also have 210 degrees plus 360 degrees n, where n is any integer. So the general solution consists of two sets of answers, 
they differ by 360 degrees because the graph of y equals cox cos of x has a period of 360 degrees. The general solution to cos 2x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. It consists of two sets of answers which differ by 180 degrees because the graph of y equals cos 2x has a period of 180 degrees only, not the 360 that was the original, but now only 180 degrees. So what's the general solution here? The general solution would be 75 degrees plus 180 degrees n, with n being any integer, and the other one is going to be 105 degrees plus 180 degrees n, where n is any integer. Now, does that make sense? I know it covers the, the first, there's two answers that we see, but remember one of the answers was 255. So what is 75 plus 180? Well, 75 plus 180 is actually 255. So that one's covered in that family. And the other one was 285 degrees. And let's see. 105 degrees plus 180 degrees, that is 285 degrees. So this is the general solution for cos 2x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Let's talk about solving a multiple angle equation using a graphical approach. Taking a look at class example 1, given tan of 2x is equal to root 3, where 0 is less than x and x is less than 2 pi, uh, inclusive. Find the exact values of x using a graphical approach. So a graphical approach probably means that we're going to be using our calculators. So let's take a look at y1 equaling the left side of the equation, so tan, tan of 2x. And then we're going to make the second y, or y2, is equal to the right side. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 3. So let's pull that up. We're going to find the intersection of these two and see if we can create our general solution. So let's take a look at what our calculator might bring up. So y1 will say this is equal to tan of 2x. And then as our y2, we will make this the square root of 3. We're going to change our window now. So let's change our window. Um, let's make this maybe... Um, about 0, and we want it to go to 2 pi, so we'll say 2 times pi here for the x maximum, and we'll make the scale go by pi divided by 6. Alright, then make our y minimum. Um, let's make it a negative 2 value, something like that, and then make our y max high enough so that we'd see this y2, this square root of 3. So let's just make that 2, and let's see what that looks like. Uh, so a recognizable tan curve, and it keeps on going. Uh, and there is our root, root 3, but it's not low enough. I'm going to just change the window here so that we can make it um, look a little bit better. So I'm going to make this maybe 3. We'll just call it 4. And then that way we can see it a little bit better. So our root 3 is going to be in a nicer spot right there. Okay, so let's find the intersection. We have second trace and then calculate the intersect. The conversation with the calculator, the first curve, yes, the second curve, and then we will move over to guess what that is. And we get this 0.523, something like that. Let's see what that is. We know that there's a pi going to be in there because we're looking for the exact value. So we're going to take, take this value and get the answer. Let's just make sure that it is, yes, so that is the value that we found. And we're going to divide it by pi because we know a pi is a part of this. So we're taking the pi out and then we can see what the fraction of this is going to be. So fraction is 1 over 6. That means then that we can say that one of the first ones, x1, is going to be equal to pi over 6. Now what is the second one going to be? Well, if we take a look at the second, actually, if we take a look at this graph, we notice that it seems like this tan is a very consistent distance. Uh, there's one, another curve, and it's considerably the same distance. So let's see if we can find that second, second value. So we have second trace, the intersection, and then first curve and the second curve. Let's move over. So that we can guess the second piece. And here we have it. 
2.094 or something like that. And so let's see if we can find, let's make sure that that's there. Yes, and it's, we know that there's a pi inside that. So divide it out. And then we can find out what that fraction is. Two thirds. So we can say then this x2 is equal to 2 pi over 3. And we can continue if we wish, but we'll notice that these, the graph here shows only this common distance apart, right? And so if we take a look at our answers, we have pi over 6 and 2 pi over 3. That's within one of them. Let's find x3 then. Find x3 and we'll find x4 because it looks like there's 1, 2, 3, and 4 answers. So let's be very thorough here of second trace and the intersection. Enter, enter, move over to guess. And we get this 3.66. So when we quit over there, we have our second answer. Let's just make sure that's there. We know that a pi is part of that answer, so we'll divide by pi. And now we have our math. To get the fraction part, we can see that this is going to be 7 pi over, over 6. So this is equal. This is equal to 7 pi over 6. And this 4, the fourth one, is going to be first curve and then the second curve. And the guess is over here. And we get a 5.23. Let's quit out of here so that we can find the answer. Yes, 5.23. Divide the pi out. Uh, 5 over 3. So here we have 5 over 3. Oops. 5 pi over 3. So I was a little confused on it looked very much like the other one, but 5 pi over 3. But then we can say, okay, well, what is the general solution to this tan 2x equals to root 3? Well, we have this pi over 6. And then when it goes to this one, this one is just a pi over 2 more. So in fact, we have this pi over 6 plus pi over 2n, where n is any integer. In fact, that fits for all of these. We can see this one is just one pi missing here. So it's a pi that way and a pi this way. And these two just differ by pi over 2. So in fact, this is pi over 6 plus pi over 2 n, where n is any, any integer. So, taking a look at this general solution, it consists of answers which, which differ by pi over 2 radians. Now, we can also think of that as 90 degrees in degrees. But because the graph y equals tan 2x has a period of pi over 2, then the general solution adds that multiple of pi over 2. Let's take a look at algebraically investigating solutions to multiple angle equations. So consider this equation sine of 3x is equal to root 2 over 2. So we'll complete the following steps to solve this equation, where we have x is between 0 and 2 pi inclusive. So if x is defined for this domain, then 3x would be defined for which domain? Well, think of multiplying each one of these times 3. So times 3 times 3 times 3. And so we would have 0 times 3 is 0. Then we have the x times 3, which is 3x, and 2 pi times 3 would be 6 pi. Okay, well, taking a look at sine of 3x here, I'm just going to put this in a box. So we'll call that just this little sine of this circle here is equal to root 2 over 2. That means that since it's a positive value, it's going to be in quadrants 1 and 2. So this is 1 and 2. The reference angle, now what we're trying to do is we're thinking, what if we were solving for this? sine of this different value was equal to root 2 over 2. Well, that means that the reference angle here would be the sine inverse of root 2 over 2. Well, that, in that case, we can think of it in degrees. We're thinking 45 degrees. But in, pi, in radians measure, it's pi over 4. But here I'm going to put in brackets. It's going to be 45 degrees. OK, if that's the case, we have the reference angle of pi over 4. So we have one angle, angle is going to be pi over 4. The other angle is going to be this one. 
uh, well, this is the rotation angle, but this being the reference angle, that means that rotation angle is going to be pi minus pi over 4. So in that case, pi minus pi over 4, that's going to be 3 pi over 4. So that's the other angle here, 3 pi over 4. Now, remember that in, we can add 2 pi here because we're thinking of this x, right? So uh, we add 2 pi to this, so 2 pi plus pi over 4. Or the other one, of course, you could have 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, so 3 pi over 4. You could also have 4 pi, so adding 2 pi twice. And then you have your pi over 4. And then you also have your 3 pi over 4 here. OK, well, if 3x is equal to one of these values, one of them is going to be pi over 4. The other one is going to be here 2 pi. So 2 pi would be 8 pi over 4. So we're talking about 9 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. And then over here, you have this 4 pi. So 4 times, so this could be 8 would be 2. So we're talking about 16, right? 16 pi plus another one is, so we'll call that 17 pi over 4. And then, so those are the three there. And then for the other ones, let's just use a different color here. 3 pi over 4, you got 3 pi over 4. And then when you add 2 pi to that one, it's going to be 8 pi. So this is going to be 11 pi over 4. And over here, you have a 16 pi over 4, which makes 4 pi, and then plus 3. So that's 19 pi over 4. So you can see you have these blue ones and you have these red ones. So what is x? Well, if you're taking a look at at what x would be, your 3x is this, that means x is going to be this divided by 3. So we have a pi over 4 divided by 3, so it's pi over 12. And of course, this is going to be 9 pi over 12. This is going to be 17 pi over 12. And then if we look at the red ones, then we have 3 pi over 12. But that later on can be thought of as pi over 4, right? This is pi over 4. And then 11 pi over 12. And here we have 19 pi over 12. OK, so can we state the general solution then of sine 3x is equal to root 2 over 2? We're taking care of treating it this 3x as one big x, finding that reference angle and finding all those answers, and then solving for x. So the general solution here, we, it looks like we have the blue versions, right? We have pi over 12 plus looks like we're here, we're adding 8 pi over 12 each time, right? 1 plus 8 is 9, and then plus another 8 is, is 17. So here we're talking about adding 8 pi over 12. But if we simplify this, we have 4, that's 2 pi over 3. That's what we're adding each time. So this is, we have 2 pi over 3. And then for another answer, we have the other one, so this is 3 pi over 12, but we can think of it as pi over 4. And then again, we're adding this 8 pi over 12. And we know that 8 pi over 12 can be simplified to 2 pi over 3. Now we need to, since we're doing the general solution, this is going to be 2 pi over 3 times n, where n can be an integer. And of course, we'll add it in here too. So n and n being any integer. So those two parts will comprise the general solution for the equation of sine 3x is equal to root 2 over 2. I will leave it as an exercise for you to use a, your graphing calculator to find and verify that those are the answers. So the general solution then consists of these two sets of answers which differ by 2 pi over 3 radians because the graph of y equals sine 3x has a period of 2 pi over 3 radians. And we can also combine it with our knowledge of transformations. If we think about sine 3x, that is like a b value. So if you think of this b value equaling 3, when we're talking about polynomials and other things, then this b value of equal 3 means that we we're talking about a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 third, right? So we're taking each of those values and dividing it by three. So that would take the normal period of two pi and divide it by three as well.